Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode nine of the PSR podcast, season two. And happy New Year to everyone. This is our first podcast of the new year. Uh, so I'm Iron. With me today, we have my fellow co-hosts, Etiquette. Hello. Jordan. Hello. And our two guests for this week are Pokeguy. Hello. And Skoa. Hi. All right, so uh, yeah, nothing much in terms of notable newsworthy inf stuff happening uh, for this past month. There will probably be more things coming up uh, in the coming months with Arceus coming out, etc. So, but so we'll jump right into our first uh, world record notable run of this past month. And we have Pokeguy, who's our guest, to talk about it because it's his run. All right. Uh, thanks for following up one of the worst parts of the run. <laughs> But um, we usually do that. <laughs> I mean, this wasn't that bad. I think it can go a lot worse than this. But uh, this run was very, very good. This is like the run I've been wanting for years. I've been playing this game on and off for years, trying to get a really good run, and I finally got it with this one. Um, so one thing about this run is that it uses Blizzard, which is possibly not really worth it. But I just we didn't really know which route which ice beam route was better there's two different ice beam routes and the two world records before this used ice beam um but we didn't really know which one was better so i just said screw it i'm just going to do the fastest route even though it's riskier and probably not worth it and it ended up working out really really well um this early game really wasn't that good compared to what i had been getting um so like the week before, I got like two surges, like a minute faster than this run, which is crazy. There were like two mid 47s, and I don't think anyone else has ever gotten a 47 besides me. So, actually, pretty crazy. Um, the run really through the forest is really all the bad thing, and then it was good after that. Um, what else? What else? I was able to get fly split red bar off Cubone, which is good. And then it was just really good from there, except for Agatha. So just like, like, how long have you been doing yellow again? Um. Well, I started really mid twenty seventeen, which is somehow almost five years ago. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> um that's when i got my first world record which was 15516 i was actually more late 2017 um then i've been doing it on and off for a really good time since then and like two years ago i got frustrated with blizzard so i routed ice beam got the first sub 154 with it and then wayne bro beat that run also with ice beam and then i got this with blizzard like, so you said Blizzard was fastest because I assume with all power and stuff. Like, is it like how much of a difference is it like a few seconds? Uh, it can depend. Um, if you go to Viridian Rival, which is like an hour and thirty six minutes in, Are that's like back? most. I have no clue. <laughs> that's it's like, oh, yeah, like I'll be after this. That's like the biggest time save I had with Blizzard because with Ice Beam you have to heal before this fight. Because Ice Beam doesn't one-shot the Sand Slash. Um, but I didn't want to heal out of Red Bar, so you can just Blizzard it. And then this Execute has three moves. And one of them is Stun Spore. So it's this is really risky, but if it works out, you save a ton of time. I get Stun Spore Miss. So now I have Red Bar for that whole fight. And if I get Encounters in Victory Road, which I didn't. But that's really good. That saves a lot of time over at the Ice Beam route, getting that fight. Like, I just noticed there's another timer counting down what? Uh, What's yeah, so like? I was doing a subathon, um, nice. <laughs> but I accidentally got this on literally pretty much the first attempt of the subathon. So, <laughs> you know, I was kind of unlucky, but that's okay. I mean, unlucky, it's still, you got a world record. Yeah, but... that's, it's okay. <laughs> could, yeah, it could be worse things that could happen. Just have to find other content for. 
the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, one other thing about this Blizzard route is that the champ fight is possibly the worst fight of the of the run. Is that if you well you can get three different nittos. Um, with this one I had, which was fourteen special. If you have you can get thirteen, fourteen, or fifteen special. If you have fourteen or fifteen, you have to hit a Blizzard on Sand Slash and get an eighty five percent range. If you have 13 special, it's a 74% range on the last fight of the game, which can be very scary. And that's why this route is not very good on an average compared to Ice Beam, but, you know, worked out. I also didn't get full red bar here, which is really rare. I got a almost mineral earthquake, which was really unfortunate. Yeah, I... I know. I think I don't know if you put it in like the doc or if it was like in the description for this. You say it's going to be difficult to beat because of this ending. Yeah. Like, where is like what time save is there? I guess you mentioned that you got the minimum role in the champion fight. But what other yeah, things that, again? That doesn't save that much time. It saves like six to eight seconds to get full champ red bar over this. Maybe even less actually. Uh, and then the Agatha fight wasn't great. Everything else is really good, except for, like, Forest. You can save, like, 45 seconds on my Forest with good luck. But that's not easy. Yeah, fair. And then you oh. have... Oh, you pretty much have to use Blizzard if you want to beat this time. Pretty much. It's just not... It's just too hard to beat with Ice Beam, most likely. So I don't know who's going to do that, but we will see. Is it going to be you? Are you going to Not anytime soon. soon. Not anytime soon. Maybe yeah. in a few years if I feel like going for 152, but I don't think that will happen. Fair enough. Oh, uh, yeah. At least when like, this next week, you'll be a, a bit busy. But... That's right. Uh, let's go. I think this is you now. Yeah, well, once again, um, worst part of the run highlighted. <laughs> uh, so, uh, as you can see, like the previous record I had for this was literally just barely missing the uh, 56 barrier, and that's the only reason uh, I came back to beat this run was to get a 56. Um, this fight alone that you're watching now lost me 30 seconds in like the the. Like, th this was the worst aspect of the run, this 30 seconds on this one fight. Um, in pretty much all other aspects, this run was actually really, really good. But in DP any percent, like, one bad fight just lets you down so much. But I'm really, really surprised that this run actually managed to get a 56. The, the most notable part, really, about this is that it uses the March skip route, uh, which, if you don't know... Uh, normally you will go into the Mart in Sanjem Town just after like Lucas shows you around the place and like yeah this is the Pokemon Center or whatever. You go into the uh, Mart there and you buy potions for the run. Uh, you can skip that in order to get an earlier uh, encounter. Let's streak through a turn of forest which requires like a completely different minute path right from the beginning of the game. Um, but it does mean you only have pretty much two potions for the entire run. You get one at the end of Route 202, which is to do you from really there until uh, Mars. And then there's one at the Valley Windworks that you can get. And that that's if you need it either for Mars or you are not confident with going into Pachirisu in Blaze. Uh, in, in most scenarios, you'll be getting both of them. But ironically, um, this run is actually one that would have been completely okay skipping the Windworks potion. But that's really the biggest difference, uh, and if everything goes well there, you save quite a lot of time. But um, yeah, I I'm happy with this run. Uh, it got the 56, which is like the only thing I came back for. Um, I don't know if anyone really intends to sit and try and beat that, because this category is really, really annoying to grind. The, the only person I would think, probably Pokeguy, you might attempt to beat this at some point. but Maybe. Yeah, other than that, I, I don't actually know who would be willing to put themselves through this category to try and beat that. So, uh, is this the third time in a row now? Or fourth? I, 
I have no clue in terms of like how many times you've now improved your own time or uh this this is the first time I've improved my own time in English. I uh, I've been here a couple times on the Japanese record whenever Dexy right. and I went back and forth a few months back. Okay. But my 5701 was the first time I ever had record in this category after you know grinding it on and off since like 2018 and I got the record twice in one year, which is pretty incredible. <laughs> Oh yeah, because I guess this is this was on the thirtieth of December, wasn't it? So yeah, I think I think so. It was towards the end of the year. I actually had um, a better run than this. I had a thirty-three fifty-five Mars on Christmas Day. <laughs> uh, I was sitting doing runs, and I had one that was like nine seconds better than this one. That actually had a way better setup going into Pachirisu. Uh, I had Blaze going into the fight and just. You know, got killed, unlucky. But you know, there's nothing you can really do about that. But ba basically, to, to beat a run like this, you kind of need a start that's equally as good and then just not lose a bunch of time on the Gardenia split, which is really, really hard to do because the Gardenia split is awful. There's so many ways you can uh, lose time. Like, I, I actually very nearly lost this run because uh, Gardenia went for Stun Spore and missed, thankfully, which... It, you know, it is like the fastest outcome of the fight, but obviously, like, you never want to see Stun Spore. Is there a good Gardenia split in any game? Uh, Platinum any percent. Alright, fair. <laughs> and I guess Platinum if uh, glitchless if you use Chimchar, but, like, why would you do that? Yeah, why would you use Chimchar ever? Yeah, well, why would you ever use Chimchar? <laughs> Speaking yeah. of never using Chimchar, um, like yeah, this is the new Platinum Glitchless record with uh, Piplop, and this is one of the worst fights in the run, yeah, fair enough. Uh, so the long back and forth, I guess, between everyone arguing uh, over Piplop and Chimchar for nearly a year at this point since Crafted got record with Chimchar... Uh, Piplop finally has uh, a run, just in general, that is sub-340, uh, and it went the whole way down to 337. Um, this is the this is the first ever record with the new Piplop route. Um, so, ironically, this route change actually all revolves around uh, the Pachirisu fight as well. Uh, after Mars, on the old route, you would normally fight two Hiker Optionals to get Bubble Beam before going into the Pachirisu fight, so you could kill it immediately. Now, you skip both of those Optionals and just go into Pachirisu without the extra experience. Uh, and then you have to kill the bugs while keeping Pachirisu. Like, Pachirisu just has to sit there and can freely just spam Spark on you if it wants. But you have to kill the three bugs to get Bubble Beam, and then you kill Pachirisu. And it saves a lot of time. Uh, like, that, this road change alone saves, like, a minute and a half. Like, just directly. So it's, it's just a direct upgrade. If you're willing to put up with Pachirisu resets. Which, thankfully, I only ever died to this fight, I think, maybe twice in the entire time I grinded it. Like, it's really not that bad. You have to get really, really unlucky to lose this. Like, I had fights where I would get Spark Paralyzed turn one, and I would still win without using a Super Potion. Uh, like you have to get really, really unlucky to lose this. This the how patch is, How much does Spark do? Sorry, how much does Spark do? Like, uh, in terms of damage, Spark does just under one third, I think. But the problem oh, okay. is like that it's the thirty percent paralyze Paralyzed, that's yeah. really the the big issue. But the other thing is because you have the metronome on um, Primplop, the order of the bugs that sent out is completely random uh and the butterfly is arranged no matter what order uh the bug catcher sends it out in so sometimes you miss the butterfly range and it gets an absorb off on you or something like that um so then it goes down to like patchy can kill you in like three sparks as opposed to needing the fourth or whatever oh. but the, there were also yeah, a few yeah. Yeah, the, the, the fight, it, it can go really badly really easily, but it's not as bad as people think, from my experience at least. Uh, the, the other right change really was 
the you, you used to fight um the Heracross spinner in Maylene's gym if you um if you hit like no extra spinners or whatever to make up experience to get Empoleon. Uh it turns out it's just faster to skip that optional and get the uh rare candy in the bog just past Pastoria. So yeah, like the, the, that that's a change that you would implement regardless of if you were doing the uh the new you know like uh, optional skip for bubble beam or whatever uh this seed like the the, the entire pip is different as well this uses a different seed than the old right as well because we're skipping so much experience we need a better pip um so th this one has like insanely good ivs it's like it has 23 hp and then just everything else is like 31 30 or 30 ones um thanks amoeba by the way that's really kind of you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the, those are the big changes. Uh, new seed, cutting out optionals, really. And then there's a few different changes with, like, uh, we keep Brian now. We don't teach uh, Flash Cannon anymore, which is, it's again, it's not risky. It can lead to some scenarios where you can um, lose your run to Candace. Uh because with the way that she sends out pokes, uh, it means she sends out a bomb of snow before uh, Frostlass, and Frostlass has snow cloak, and then you twenty you get to mess with a twenty percent miss, and generally if you miss, then you just die straight up, which I guess is less stupid than missing a fire blast or something in a random point of the run and dying, uh, which is the main reason I prefer this route. Anyway, the uh, what what was the like? How much worse was the old split compared to this uh, seed? Sorry, compared to the new seed. You said there's a new one. Uh, yeah, this seed is considerably better. Not only is the piplock just way better, the actual movement is way quicker as well. Uh, like you'll see, my Rourke split is like a twenty eight fourteen. That's really good on this route. That is like unheard of on the old seed, just because the movement is that much quicker. The, the a work split like that would have been completely unattainable on the old route. I'm pretty sure. I I think my Rourke gold before this uh, route change was like a mid twenty year, and now my gold is a twenty year oh seven or something. Like the the early game movement, like there's just so much less of it because you used to have to do like so much RNG advancement to advance to the Piplop frame, and it, it that alone. It cuts off. I think the new seed in movement alone saves you like 13 seconds, I think Worcester said. Which is quite a lot in the first 20 minutes or so. Yeah, that's like, that is a massive amount. If it's just movement alone. like Yeah, no, that that's literally basic movement. Like, and it, it also makes uh, something slightly more consistent. Because uh, we fight the... There, there's a miner with a Geodude in Orberg Mine that we fight now. You used to fight both trainers in Rourke's gym, and the the first trainer there has a Geodude that's like a 1 in 16 range or something out of Torrent. Uh, but now we just fight the dude in the mine who's like 100%. It, it always dies. Another one of the things is just a direct upgrade. Uh, like, how, like, how do you like figure out that this... Well, if Worcester or you or whoever did like figure out how did they figure it out in terms of like all the things that made like made this one much better I guess because like I mean I guess more I just don't know the process of figuring out with this like all this like trying to figure out like from the right seed getting the well, pip lovers much like better or not better but like basically yeah how do, how do you figure out all this with this uh with Tottenham Basically, whenever you're seed searching, uh, Slayer actually has a program for this that's really, really useful. The the main three things that you need to look for uh, in a Piplop seed is obviously Piplop's IVs. Uh, you need to look for a Cricketot with a metronome, and you also need Pokerus. Um, and then, like, Slayer's program just outputs numbers to you, and then you sit in an emulator with uh, the Ultima RNG Lua script uh, that shows you the current RNG value. And you basically, it's literally just trial and erroring movement until you get the outcome that you need. 
<laughs> like it it's not really that complicated but it is really annoying to do well and there's some things you need to like um for example after the catching tutorial the mashing that you do there you have to find a frame window to exit uh the grass and reload the route to make sure you're still on like a consistent uh, rng frame it's stuff like that that's actually more challenging than just getting through without getting encounters or whatever. Or the other thing that's really annoying is lining up the Pokerus frame uh, so that you enter the battle on a frame that then Pokerus spreads to Piplop or whatever. Which on this route is actually on the Galactic or yeah, the Galactic Double and Jubilife after Rourke. So keeping Manip, like ex uh, committing to extended Manip is like mandatory on the new seed. How, how far so, does, yeah. how far does extended manip go to is it just to that point or no uh manip best case scenario goes to beyond heart home city i actually lost manip after mars won on this run and got an encounter as well because i messed up like one tile of movement like immediately after mars and got an encounter which is a mistake i've made numerous times but um yeah, in, in terms of, like, beatability, like, this is really just the product of the new Piplop route going okay. Like, this run really isn't that exceptional. Uh, like, I, I probably could have played for another two weeks and beaten this and got on, like, a 336 with relative ease. Um, I know Crafted's actually trying to beat this at the moment and put Chimchar back on top. So, maybe in... Um, a month or two platinum will be here again with 336s or maybe a 335 or something but um rest assured piplop will probably remain at the top that sounds good that's what that's what should be the case it is what should be the case because best case scenario uh we know that piplop is quicker it's just chimchar is like that much more consistent but we we know for like pretty much for certain that Chimchar is not the top end right to use. Speaking of monkey though, yeah. Speaking of, uh, Dexy got a new uh, Platinum Glitchless Japanese world record with um, with the monkey route. Uh, this is actually the product of some new route changes that's gone on in that right and this is one of the reasons that i think crafted is back trying to take the english record um basically they now get like an iron I, I think i think they get they pick up like an extra item and sell it whenever they're doing shopping in veilstone so that they can uh skip uh the entire shopping section in celastic town which saves quite a bit of time and then there's also some new strats in the giratina segment uh but like th those are the major changes that have happened the rest of this run is it's pretty much like you know the standard got luckier or whatever but i do know for certain that dexy is looking into doing the new piplop route um so may maybe dexy's joining our side after all this time even after just setting a new chimchar record is there any difference between Japanese and English? Because another is for Emerald. So it, it, I, I know in Gen three it's like different natures and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, Gen four is not. Uh, it is different, but not in that sense. The main difference, is like like I said, after battles that have text, like uh, text after battles, RNG advances during those segments, uh, and obviously the text is way way faster in the japanese version so you have to like wait and time your input because obviously all these windows are designed for the english text um so japanese runners have to wait i, I know dexy uses uh cues in the music to time you know either the final text box or when to start moving after uh, but that that's really the only difference. It's just the text speed affects how the manip works. The rest of it is like it's the exact same. But for some reason there is significantly less um lag in menus and shopping 
as Kutora has rightfully pointed out in chat. Uh, if you've ever played uh, the Gen 4 games, in fact, no, Hard Gold to Silver is not even that bad. If you've ever played any of the Sinnoh games, you'll know just how much shopping and menuing lags. That's just all completely gone in the Japanese version for really no discernible reason. <laughs> the the menus are so fluid and they just it's just they just work so much better that's just that's a strange one i don't understand it, like i understand my text of it i think like coliseum the text is much quicker in japanese because it's not loading another language on top of it yeah but like i don't know yeah that is that that one seems a bit weird well, because I'm pretty sure English and Japanese actually like use the same like X characters uh, per frame in Gen 4. It's just because the, the English characters are really small in Gen 4 by comparison to the Japanese ones. And obviously there's just less characters in Japanese in general. Uh, it's not like Gen 5 where they kind of balanced it out between the two. Like the text just runs wild in Gen 4. <laughs> But yeah, that's been uh, Platinum Glitch just over the past month. Competition in both routes, and not even done yet. Like, that'll, uh, the competition will keep going, I think, for quite some time. That's good to, good to hear. But then, with the remakes of Gen 4, I mean, I don't know, like, th this game's been patched a million times already. <laughs> but I'm going to let Etika talk about this, because... I assume, well, I decode all right, because I assume you both know much more about this. Just like the glitches, uh, glitchless runes, at least. Yeah, so. Yes. Um, yeah, you can go ahead, Iron. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, like, glitchless, I don't think has changed too much. Um, mm -hmm. There's, like, one sort of trick that we use in Candace's gym with the repel that was kind of voted on as being allowed in glitchless, but as far as we know, that's. I think that's still that's still in the latest patch, so um, yeah. we never really did any of the trainer skips or anything like that. It's the any percent that's gone through all the changes. Yeah. So this is uh, Crafted's um, BDSP any percent glitchless world record. This is in Shining Pearl. Um, it's worth mentioning that right now the two games are split. So Shining Pearl and Brilliant Diamond are different games, but they have basically the same route. Uh, the only difference is the legendary at the end, which um, I'm not exactly sure how it's done in Diamond, but I know in Pearl it's only you can only use Palkia for like six total fights or seven, so it's um, going to be a pretty minimal difference. Um, the main route you can see is using Kaza, the in-game trade Abra that you get in um, Orberg, and there are a lot of headaches that come along with using an in-game traded Pokemon. Um, what you just saw there was Wake, which is essentially when, you know, if you're doing a run, that's when you sort of like get this relief off your shoulders because there's a lot that can go wrong before Wake and Wake himself can go very wrong. Um, disobedience in modern Pokemon games is typically like 10 levels per badge. Um, and it's pretty high. It's like up to level like 20 before the first badge and then level 30 for the next 40 for the one after that like that. This game takes obedience thresholds from the originals, so you only get level 10 up until you beat the second gym leader and level 30 before you get four badges. Uh, so Wake is the fourth gym leader. You can only be level 30 for that fight. If you're level 31, you have the chance of disobeying. Um, and to make matters even worse, uh, you want... The cadaver to be level 30 when you start the fight for damage output reasons um the gyarados even though you're using shockwave which is four times effective uh the gyarados is a 15 and 16 range at level 30 so you you need to hit level 30 but not go past level 30 during the fight so it's completely brutal um once you get past that it's fine but the the experience window is something like 79 experience it's super tight um so any optionals sort of either kill the run or you have to risk essentially a coin flip at the end um but yeah so that that's more about the run as a whole uh this run here this is crafted's uh 31934 uh this is the 
only sub 320 run on the leaderboard, I believe. There are a couple other like low 320s. Um, but this is 319. Um, lost some time in the mid game. Uh, one of the strategies you use on Wake is to have a um, low HP or lower HP Monferno that you can sack. Um, if it's not low HP, you have a chance of like not dying, or it can use the Quagsire can use the wrong move because uh, you want to taunt the Quagsire. So you taunt it with Monferno and die, so you can get the Cadaver back in. Um, if your HP is you know too high, then that's an issue, and that's what happened on this run. Um, other than that, though, uh, the run was pretty solid. There's uh, some really good sections from Spear Pillar toward the end. Um, had a very good end of the run. So, um, yeah, Spear Pillar is honestly just like a really, really rough section. Uh, this Mars and Jupiter double fight is atrocious, to say the least. Yeah, um, you can go a million different ways. <laughs> yeah, and there are even things like so the general strategy is you want to set up an X defense because both of these Bronzors are just going to start spamming payback. Um, and with the X defense, it does about 20 damage. Kadabra's not by any means the uh, most bulky Pokemon. So um, you want to set up the X defense, and then you set up your X special, and then you just sort of take out one side, take out the other side. The problem is uh, if you get crit at any point, it ignores your X defense, so then you might have to heal out of turn. Um, if the Munchlax, who's your partner, because this is a true double, you're only controlling one Pokemon. Uh, if the Munchlax decides to KO one of the Bronzors too early, then an actual good Pokemon could come out. Um, Mars and Jupiter both have the opportunity to actually switch out on their own, which is a nightmare. Um, so yeah, it's, <laughs> it's definitely a pretty brutal fight. Um, like I said, I, I think it went pretty well in this run here. Um, Looks like he's gonna have to heal here, but um, but yeah, it's it's pretty bad. And then it goes right into Cyrus, who isn't too bad of a fight on its own. Um, but there are ways you can get like crit and lose time or lose the run if you get crit. Uh, this Haunch Crow is one of the meanest Pokemon that they've ever put in a Pokemon game. Um, it has a 100% crit chance. So there's no setting up on it. Uh, you basically have to make sure the entire experience route is built around making sure you can one shot this um, Haunch Crow and then uh, you actually die to the Gyarados on purpose. Yeah, one thing I noticed here is he was level 51 for the Haunch Crow. Um, at least in the route that a lot of us are using, the War Tab put together, you're 52 for that fight. I'm not sure. I guess it's a range at 51. Yeah. I want to say it's like a 15 and 16. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because he gets an extra calcium too. He buys one Bailstone, I think. So I think he might have that range routed out. But I could be wrong okay. about that. I don't know what. I don't know what he actually does. Yeah, I know. I know Ringo has i have my own experience route that i use which is closer to ringos than war tabs um and you might be using ringos because that would explain a lot um it's basically yeah, different candy uh candy route and everything um but yeah speaking of ringo so this is uh the current glitchless japanese record uh this is a 324 18 uh and i believe this is brilliant diamond yeah so um just goes to show you can get a good time in both games. Uh, Ringo actually has a 313, an unverified 313 in English as well. Um, so just put that into perspective. Um, so I don't know too, too much about this run. Um, I know Ringo is just amazing at Gen 8. Amazing at like all gens, but uh, Gen 8 specifically. Um, what you're seeing here, the, the the different colors, that's not an issue with your monitor. That is, uh, Ringo plays with inverted colors. Uh, basically makes it a little bit easier for him to see on the fog route. Um, it doesn't make it easier for everyone. Like, I've actually tried it myself, and it makes it worse. So uh, it's sort of a player preference kind of thing, but it's just an option in your Switch. It's not something he's doing to, like, OBS or anything. Um, but fog in this game is purely... 
well, it's not purely cosmetic. It's cosmetic in the overworld, and then in battle, instead of in Gen 4, it, like, decreasing your accuracy by 40%, I think it is. Um, it just sets up Misty Terrain. So there's no downside in our speed run to uh, just leaving the fog there and not using defog. Um, but, yeah, the other thing that's worth noting is... Um, Japanese has a little bit different uh, rule set than English, so uh, we don't. I don't think you're playing the the actual game audio, are you? Uh, no, it's not coming through. Yeah, so uh, in English, we actually turn off the background music uh, because various things like uh, level up jingles, when you receive a badge, when you pick up an item, um, all of those play a little jingle. It's like a two to three second jingle, and that gets completely skipped when you use or when you turn off the background music um for some reason it's tied to background music and it's turned off or it just skips the time that it takes um it saves something like 10 to 12 seconds every time you beat a gym leader uh let alone every single level up so it's it saves a bunch of time uh japanese does not allow you to turn off the music so um that's part of the reason for the time discrepancy um this is probably i don't know if it's equivalent to the 313 in english it's probably pretty close um because it's i would estimate between five and ten minutes is what music saves so um but yeah this is uh this is the current state of bdsp any percent glitchless do they still include credits in their timing in japanese and jenny uh, yeah I believe they do. Yeah, they, yeah. Really do. Yeah, yeah, they do. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that, that'll be part of the time difference as well. Yeah. The trends actually look quite cool <laughs> in the inverses. <laughs> I like this look. I really like the credits in this game. Um, they they do a little bit like this where they show like a, a screenshot of the game that like, never actually happened, which is whatever. But they have a uh, like this different art style in the credits where like you're riding a bike through like an open road and stuff like that it's really cool um anyways <laughs> uh but yeah so that's glitchless um and for the first time in four generations we actually have a glitched category in pokemon so this is buster's uh 1446 in any percent glitched 1.1.1 um talk about versions in a minute uh this run is ridiculous uh it is almost a hundred percent just menuing execution uh the main glitch here that we're seeing is called menu storage um you can effectively open up a menu on top of a menu and you can use that sort of broken state to cancel events um carry a, or store events to be done later so like right now he's storing the fact that the lady's supposed to push him when he hops over the ledge the lady pushes him away and he is now levitating for some reason um and then yeah he's gonna do it again to get himself uh into the elite four but it's it's absolutely wild uh the only rng in the the game or in the run is the opening starly battle um you have to ko the starly uh it's two hits optimally i don't know if a crit would kill in one shot but i know it dies in two hits most of the time which is why you pick turtwig um and then you basically do menu storage get yourself to jubilife menu storage again to get yourself out of bounds and run all the way to uh the pokemon league out of bounds it's a very blind path to say the least um and then once you get there, you can essentially use menu storage again uh, to bypass all of the Elite Four members as well as Barry, the Barry fight. And yeah, it's it's completely ridiculous. Uh, you should skip ahead to one of the Elite Four members because it's one of the funniest things. So, uh, well, that was already too far. Just the first thing I put, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So basically. Um, when you walk into one of the Elite Four member rooms, what happens is the game pushes you forward and closes the door to prevent you from leaving. 
And so what you do is you cancel the push forward event or you you prevent it from continue continuing. You like store it and then you walk up to the top of the room and then allow the event to proceed and it pushes you through the door so you can get like because it wants to push you forward, pushes you through the door so you can actually get, you know, into the next room. Um. So it's just wild. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a hundred percent menu execution at this point. Um, I know Buster's looking to Buster got the first. No, Buster didn't get the first uh fourteen, like fourteen minute time. Um, I forget who did. But um, they have the current record, and I think they're pushing for a fourteen thirty. Um, like sub fourteen forty. So, I don't know how much lower it can go. Um, I thought it was gonna cap out in like the high fifteens, and it's just kept going and going. <laughs> so, thinking so, like, just because you know, I know, like Isaac and I, and you've both done like BSP. Or in fact, have you? I know Isaac, you've done glitched as well as glitchless. I don't know if you've done glitched. I am. Have you? No, I haven't. Right, but yeah, like you've done items of BSP. Let's go and okay. Have, I, have you <laughs> basically? Have you done like attempts of this just for a bit? Um, when it came when, out, when it came out, I did like one glitchless attempt and got to wake and thought it was extremely boring and stopped. And then I tried to learn the glitch drought, but I don't know, it was too hard. I didn't care, so I stopped. <laughs> the <old> fair. <laughs> I beat Absolutely. the game whenever it came out and then haven't played it since. Also fair. Yeah, it's, I mean, I know, like, personally, I'm not too big a fan of the run. Just wasn't for me either, but. It is, I think. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how, like, people have. Well, I mean, the fact that people have managed to find a run to get to 14 minutes, 46 seconds. That's wild, especially seeing as it hasn't been on for, like, four generations. But just. People, like people have taken to this game, mm -hmm. just in general. Even like glitchless, it's like there's also yeah, um, there's like a scythe root wit for brilliant diamond, which may may did, I don't know if may originally thought of it and did all the browsing all of like may originally thought of it and then had actually help. I don't know too much, but yeah, like that. That's what what did you call it? Etiquette was it like a good old main? <laughs> yeah. It, it'll be a good all main um no i i think the i think the game is is interesting i think i had a lot of fun looking at like the routing ideas um and then i'm still i'm sort of taking a break from it now but i'm still kind of running it because i don't have a time i'm happy with i don't know if i necessarily would if i got like a 316 or something i don't know if i would want to push it lower um but yeah I, it's like i mean pretty much everybody on this call should understand this feeling it's one of those things it's like you know you're capable of a certain time so even if you don't like the game you want to just keep playing it <laughs> so uh, that that's sort of where i'm at with it um i think the the route is interesting but it, it like poke i said it does get a little dull um at times so the, the no we'll music alone is a deal breaker for me. That's like the most boring thing in the universe to me. I like, I want to, yeah. uh, I that, agree. That makes absolutely no difference to me because I, I don't listen to the game music when I play anyway. Like I don't listen to it for Sword Shield. Half the reason I run black and white twos for the music. So like <laughs> the music is great for that. I mean, it's great for Sword Shield as well. Good but like, back, yeah. like black, white two, or black, white, black, white two definitely have great music to it. So I can understand that. But... Um, uh, yeah, yeah, and then oh, go, go. I was just gonna say the only other thing to mention um, is so we we it says it in the title and everything. Um, this is the 1.1.1 version of the game. Uh, so this is the version that was released, um, like on release day. This is the version you would get if you downloaded the game. Um, there have been two updates since then. Uh, 1.1.2 patched out basically this glitch um menu storage so there was another version of the route and then uh there were like it wasn't the same menu storage but it was kind of a similar thing but it took a lot longer i, I want to say runs were like an hour long um and then 
1.1.3 came out and i honestly don't know what the glitched run looks like now um i don't know if anyone's actually completed any runs or if it's still in theory stages but it's uh definitely looking like if there is a glitched category it'll be a lot longer than 14 minutes and um there's always the chance that you know uh game freak or ilka or whoever patches it out so it's uh a bit scary people have essentially uh disconnected like you can see in buster's home screen doesn't even have it connected to the internet um so that way it never gets prompted to to download the update so everyone is sort of like keeping 111 on their switches uh if they want to keep doing runs and then yeah i don't know it's it's one of those interesting cases because there's no way to down downgrade on a switch um natively you'd have to have custom firmware for it it's just kind of annoying yeah it's it's just an issue that i think all well at least all nintendo switch periods are gonna like have or are going to have where it's going like this very, like as the had it back in the day until like 1.3 came out and just became quicker and the last version I think that came out but like it's just it's a the unfortunate case of there's going to be different versions and like how leaderboards handle that because I know that's a headache <laughs> that's happening right now especially for like for the leaderboard mods and just design it in general like how they're going to handle past, uh, past patches and all of that the thing from what I've heard is 1.1.3 slightly faster for glitchless. I think I saw that briefly. I don't know if that was tested further or not. Just with like, I don't know if it was like text or just things loading quicker. Um, uh, I don't remember. I know one of the things that it did do, which is kind of funny, is so, um, from Gen, I don't remember if it was a thing in Gen five. I know it's a thing in Gen six. Um they added the ability to like re like refresh your repels and in this game uh <laughs> before 1.1.3 yeah. the, the text box just said would you like to use another it didn't actually tell you what you were using another of they added it to say like your repel ran out would you like to use another but it only added text to the same text box um, it didn't add a new text box so it's probably like a frame because the speed text is in these games it's probably like a frame slower um but i don't know there might be like small optimizations in load times nothing substantial i don't think yeah right, fair enough yeah, i remember when the game first came out someone was it. i remember when the game first came out someone tweeted about the repel thing and there was no text for what you were doing and they were all they're all uh a little bit annoyed about that yeah so i guess they listened or maybe they just enough people complained i don't know Maybe if enough people can complain to allow back patching, it could solve everyone's issues. <laughs> yeah, that's everything with the main series runs. Like, onto the side game, like Colo, like Pokemon Coliseum. This is Exarian's Colo, any percent like run. Uh, it was a world record with a three twenty nine oh three, beating the old world record by four seconds, uh, which. Like, it was considered one of the hardest runs to beat. Uh, Bolton's run. Uh, yeah, it was Bolton. So, like... It's a bit, like I was a bit out of the looking at things for a while, but from what I can gather, it seems that there's taken, like, a... Uh, taken advantage of two different strats that have been introduced, which one of them, which is on the screen just there, was, which was catching Magikita. Is it's a 100% it's a catch, and they use it later on. Over oh, overall, it saves like seven seconds on average, maybe. But in this case, that was enough that was needed. And then there's also a death warp, which I tried looking into this to see where it was. It's somewhere, it's somewhere in the lab. I just couldn't find anything in terms of like how much time it saves. But well, this does mean like Exarian B is. I don't know if this is actually his actual PB off yet. Oh, if it's just like a recent run that he's come back from recently. But either way, he was able to beat this by over 10 minutes. And actually take Bolt, like the second world record from Bolton this month because 
back in uh well, back on the podcast day we actually raided this run it was um Ryzikin with a 33619 in no snags which well i've got to show mirror b because mirror b is the best part of coliseum and especially like the loser colos but this is like this is also just like another really really good run with uh the no snags run which basically means you cannot snag anything you could like so you use an espion umbreon and you get gifted a puzzle so i assume the puzzle is probably in use uh for like some some death fodder as such but it was just a very solid run this one apparently uh that like there was no terrible fights which caused massive time loss but there's still probably like another 30 seconds to a minute being saved which would actually I believe make it quicker than the original or like the what was used originally for like the any percent run which was croconaw so it might actually get to the point that the original any percent run is now slower than no snags which is just an, it's just an interesting thing i think as rise can put it like well and truly uh, truly blurry croconaw as a run Unless you want to do it as an alt main. But yeah, just Amber point out. It's only 7 minutes slower now for no snags. Which is unbelievable. Because 80% being able to catch Meditite. Like that gives you a Twisted Spoon. Which gives a lot of power to... Uh, or increases the power for Espeon when using uh, Psychic moves. And then also now catching the Makahita. And... I don't think there's anything else. But either way, just like ca like catching things is quick and it saves a good amount of time. So the fact that this with no snags is managing to like catch up is also very impressive. And now the PMD block because there's a lot of uh, a lot of PMD that happened this month. Once again, this one is Shady Gamers Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explores of Time Any Percent No Wonder Mail English DS slash 3DS. It's a five twenty four twenty eight. Uh, this had a bad desert section, but then was good pretty much everything else. There was almost a death here, which is why I've highlighted this. But ultimately, yeah, it's just, again, one of those very good run. Other than like maybe like one section where there was, could have been a bit of improvement. This has literally changed since the last time I looked at this, which was literally in November. <laughs> This... Dude, like, this is a different Dialga strat than literally the last time I looked at this. PMD like to, from the, from what I can gather, just reason like when like compiling this for the podcast, they like to change the like the Pokemon that they, that they use seemingly every month, which is cool. So, but yeah, no one ever seems to yeah. be doing the same thing. Yeah, it's like it's, it's probably one of the most varied runs. Like, and that's the thing; it's for each Pokemon game. Oh, for each mystery dungeon game, it seems to be the case, because I mean, I'll I'll go into the next one. Super Mystery Dungeon had three. I actually had three world records, but one of them have like taken out for this section just because there was that much Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon. I don't think this has had three world records in the same month before, because like I've never really seen people run this. I think maybe everyone's just happening to run that this at the moment, but this is um, Shady Gamer again. With Mr. Uh, Super Mystery Dungeon, any percent would mail English, new 3DS slash NTR. Uh, this is a 524.45, and like the note that was put with it was like a great run using Pikachu and Chespin, but the strats might not be optimal, and that might be the case because for the emulator version of the world record, um, it seems yeah, it seems to there it's Pikachu Tepig, which at least I don't know if you. As far as I just understand, maybe it's forced to use Pikachu. Actually, I can just check this easily. But either way, they're still using a different second Pokemon. But mate, Tepig's just way better. Black and uh, white one proved that for years. Tepig's just awesome. Uh, what's the current <laughs> situation with that, though? That's not important. <laughs> <laughs> the important part is he used to be. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, but for this run though, uh, this is by secure account. Um, it was like a great start, but then like slipped a bit. 
managed to then get to a like a three minute lead, uh, which then also then like slipped towards being behind, I think, towards the end. But then Tepig saved enough time to manage to get a four second PB. So on you man, Tepig. Good good old Tepig. I, I know nothing about this game. I didn't even finish I... it casually, but before the podcast started, I didn't know there was a Super Mystery Dungeon, I'll be honest. And I, I like I mean, this I game like is Mystery Dungeon. really good. It wouldn't surprise me. I like, I like the Mystery Dungeon games. But this one just missed me because like it was in that range where I just wasn't playing Pokemon. Like which is like that gen like late gen five, early gen six, I think. Where I just didn't really play Pokemon. And this came out. There was another uh Pokemon Ranger that came out as well that I didn't know about. Until and it was a Valmia, or the the one. No, that... Guardian Science. Oh, Charles okay. of Valmia. I played. I love that game. That's that's a brilliant game. You should play that game if you have not. I have never game. touched Ranger in my life. Oh, uh, Charles of Valmia is brilliant. So good, but either way, yeah, that's sadly there is not a Pokemon Ranger world record in any of the games this month. And there is one more uh, Mystery Dungeon run though, which is the latest one. Uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. This is Shady Gamer with true ending, no wonder male English world record is with a 4.37.28. Um, from the sounds of it, this run was ridiculous because it was ahead of the any percent wonder male run, like their any percent wonder male run for a bit. I think it was any percent. Yeah, but either way, so like it was a really good run because like a true ending, I assume they'd go out of the way to do things. And also the fact that it was because of the Wonder Mail version, which you're allowed to bring items in that can help you. But then, because it is a true ending run, there's no Wonder Mail. It did fall behind a bit, but uh, with a solid post game due to new strats, which I believe involves only taking Kyogre to the Wishing Well or Wishing Cave. I think it's Wishing Cave. Uh, but like just being a bit more comfortable with that. Allow them to uh, finish out this run. Today I learned this game has a true ending. Uh, yeah, it's... Um, like, I never actually did it when I played casually, but... What, what is it, actually? I, I did play this casually, and I didn't know... Like, I played this at release casually. I loved this game. I did not know there was a true ending. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, is it? No, that... No, that phrase stuff that's the um, explorers of time, I think. I don't think it's that. What is it? Th this is true ending. <laughs> that's what matters. It's not just Rayquaza spoilers. That like Rayquaza destroys the meteorite. There's more to it than that. Apparently so. And I that is a look at this. You should. Uh, I should also apparently as well to be fair but that is all that's all of the uh, the noted runes for the month so there's all there's gonna be some in the uh, what should we call it in the leaderboard roundup that will pop up but going into the marathon runes for the uh, for the month quite a few there was like there's quite a few marathons so again there's been a lot of marathons since the pandemic I feel like but either way, uh, this is the first one with Winter Pride 2021, Conception SR, early percent Manipolis. Uh, so, uh, how is 11 11 41 as an end time? Uh, given you've got one shot to do this at a marathon, yeah, that's that's pretty solid. Uh, but basically, the. One of the big things in Diamond and Pearl, by contrast to Platinum, is you can get hidden power in the trainer school, and that is one of the main reasons that Chimchar is such an obvious choice, even in Manip for Diamond and Pearl, because uh, it has the advantage over Gardenia, and then because it can clear Rourke without evolving into Monferno, obviously, like, uh, whenever you're using Manip. Um, but hidden power also plays a really big uh, factor in Manipolis as well, if you decide to pick it up, there is a, a route that Etchy made that completely avoids hidden par. Um, 
but yeah most of your resetting and whatnot is going to be based on hidden power whenever you're going for pb uh especially after you get to a certain point um and obviously you're doing manipulus you have literally no clue what your hidden power is going to be obviously if you're using um like uh, iv calcs and whatnot you're going to be able to figure it out but you're never going to know your hidden power um whenever you will get it because you're only like level nine or something whenever you get hidden power so there's like no way for you to know so you, you quite literally just get it and hope it's good it looks like in this case uh, conception did get a good hidden power given um it was super effective on onyx um and geodude like that alone is good enough oh like obviously you can still do the run if you get like, even like hidden power flying or whatever but uh, this would definitely be an interesting one to do at a marathon for that reason. The mystery of hidden power. Yeah, well, what was it? It wasn't in this one, actually. It was in it was in Snow Warning, uh, which uh, I'll let Poker Guy talk about the yellow run in a bit. But because uh, I was sitting in there when Conception was doing his run for, uh, like for Snow Warning. And I. Like, Talked about like the way of him trying to figure out what his hidden power is, and it's just by fighting like specific trainers. I think, I think it was something that was like helpful, maybe in just like one fight that he ended up getting. I don't remember what it was specifically. It was interesting yeah. just hearing how mm. like they figure it out. The, the main way you figure it out is you, you can narrow it down pretty quickly on. Um... The first rival fight uh, in Diamond Pearl, the first rival fight is the one just after Jubilife, after you get the poke edge. Um, Starly and Piplop, that's, that type range is good enough that you can cut out a lot of hidden pars really, really quickly. Um, there's a table in Tucker's notes that have... Uh, the Starly and the Piplop, and then obviously if it's super effective on Starly but not on Piplop, you've got blah blah blah, all that. Each outcome leads to a different experience route that takes the best advantage of your potential hidden power type. Obviously, you can choose to completely ignore that and just YOLO that you have a certain type based on, um, you know, what what type matchups you got on the rival. But yeah, the, the, there's like, I think there's like four or five different experience routes in Tucker's notes that fight different trainers just to take advantage of um, hidden par types. Obviously, some of them are way faster. Like, if you get hidden par water, you're always going to do a million times better than um, if you get, like, hidden par flying or whatever. But the interesting thing is if you get something like water, water's the best one, really um no well, water and grass are some of the best ones uh grass is what we used in, in manip but you can um skip evolving to monferno before work because if you have a bad hidden par then you really want monferno to deal with cranny dose um because you know geo didn't onyx or whatever but cranny dose's headbutt is so strong that you really want monferno uh because it has access to mac punch and whatnot but uh, you, you can skip that with a good hidden par and just YOLO and hope that your hidden par is good enough to kill Kanidos, but Yeah, the, the, there's a bunch of different rides and a bunch of different strats you can take. Uh, and it takes, uh, like as you are hearing now, it takes a really long time to explain all the different outcomes that can come from it, which is actually really cool for, su for what is otherwise an exceptionally linear route. Like DP any percent is probably one of the most linear. Um that we have because of how short it is it's fun that manipulus takes so much of that away and makes you adapt so much more which is what uh, the biggest appeal to a lot of people because i know uh grinding diamond and pearl is you know first hand uh grinding this game is can be absolutely miserable but um manipped is a really really good way to just you know constantly finish runs and adapt and you know, it's a good way to have a lot of fun with the category. Cool. If you um, like Manipolis, that is. Yeah. Which yeah. I don't. Uh, I actually really, really hate Manipolis, but... <laughs> um, 
I mean, you gave a good selling point for it, to be fair. <laughs> and that's because I know how much it appeals to so many people, and it's an absolutely perfect gateway, especially into running the DS games, which are so hard to get into because the knowledge barrier is quite high by comparison, especially for Heart Gold so Silver. Um, it's a, not as bad for DP, but um, it, it's they're all really good ways to get into the game. So I always highly encourage them, even if I myself absolutely hate them. I know how easy they are to learn, and it's a perfect entry wave to people who are interested in the DS games, especially. I don't know what it's like in all the other generations, but I know in DS it's fantastic for entry. I can't imagine it's that brilliant in Gen 3, for example. Well, I mean, Pokeguy. <laughs> no, right, actually, kind of because you, you, uh, Ian's also done the uh, Pirate Leaf Free. How is, how is Manipolis for Gen 3? Uh, well, for, for Pirate Leaf Green, it. It's not very good. Um, I think the best time in Fire Leaf Green with my Randall just happens to get a Squirtle that's almost as good as a Manipt one and just does the Manipt road. But the Manipless road is really brutal. Uh, I don't know much about the other categories, but I know that they're, especially Sapphire, is brutal even Manipt. So I can imagine it's pretty bad Manipless as well. The Manip's pretty key for Gen 3. Minute plus E4 round two is just get Zapdos and do that instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair, fair. But then, like the ruin in the background, Poker Guy, you remember what the time you got for this was? He's not here. He left. Ah. Uh, same. Oh. Fair I morning. recall it was close. It was close to the estimate. Um. Yeah, it was a. It, over. it was a two o two thirty five. Uh, which. Oh, I mean, if you're comparing it to the world record, is there uh, like around nine minutes behind world record? But I mean, for a marathon, yeah, that's a. I assume that's a pretty solid time still. And then there was a lot of other runs, but I'm not putting them in because uh, there was a lot of time. But Edgar, you did run, I believe. You did, did a race. Yeah. 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 Uh, T Pat and I did a race of Brilliant Diamond versus Shining Pearl. Uh, he did the Scyther route, and I did the um, the Kaza route in Shining Pearl. It was uh, it was a good race. We we did it with music on, so the times weren't amazing. I think I had like a three thirty nine ish, three thirty eight maybe. Maybe it was no, it was just over three forty. Um, and I think he had like a three fifty. So, um, yeah, overall it was a lot of fun. Good, good. Then Midwest Mini Fest. I clearly forgot to pause this. There was concept, uh, Conception uh, doing Pearl Imps and Manipolis, which was shown earlier, so we'll just have this one playing in the background, which is Shifty with Red Imps and Glitchless Blindfolded. Again, just it's mad how people can beat the game blindfolded. <laughs> one of those. And I think like, this. Did end up going like a fair bit over estimate from the looks of things, but still even then, like fair play to just beat the game blindfolded. Then there's also quite a few, uh, quite a few Pokemon runs that no hold is allowed. There was Banjo with Gold and he's saying Glitchless. There was also Head Bob versus Banjo with a Crystal Key item randomizer. Then there is also Iron with Shield. Oh, two fists get Ashu. Did you enjoy the run? Yeah, I, I actually really like this category. Um, it's a great not, category. Not getting hit, not getting hit by a Buffalant, but it happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's just a really great marathon category. It's short. Um, there's a lot going on, a lot of routing stuff you can talk about. Um, it's still obviously really RNG heavy because <laughs> Cub Fu can be like any nature any it, at least some of the stats or ivs are set at 31 but you can get unlucky um yeah this run i don't recall exactly what happened in the earliest game i know onyx can be a pain if you're grinding for a good if you're going for a good time um but this one i ended up getting like so many blissies I, I don't know what level i went into 
the last fight at, but it was really high level. Because okay. I think I got like three or four level 15 blissies. Yeah, I think... And I think I was... It was 22 from the looks of it. Yeah. I think the last two blissies I got, I was planning to not kill anymore, but I was like on my way over to the soothing wetlands and I did, I just saw them. I'm like, you know what? I'll just I'll just go for it. <laughs> and uh Yeah, I mean like yeah. for a marathon, you, you may as well take them just for safety. Though from what I remember you forgot to equip the Rocky helmet. No oh, no yeah, this one. This was the second like the the refight for it, but you did okay, save yeah, before. Yeah. That's right, yeah I remember that now. Yeah, sorry, yeah Jordan was on that. commentary. If anyone, if anyone is wondering, Jordan commentated. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for having me. For that. Yeah. It's fun. Uh, there's also apparently another run which I just could not find, so I don't know if it. Did I don't think it happened? I think it was it uh, replaced by something else. Yeah, unfortunately. Right, that's, that is fair enough. Um, so on to the next marathon, though. In that case, uh, with Green Gaming Fest, Razor Flame come with Puzzle Challenge Intense. 3345. Again, it's just one of those, it's such a different run, but it's crazy to watch people do it. Because we like how quickly they'll do this. And then the RTA in Japan, there was two Pokemon runs. There is a new snap any percent race between Karo and Kojiya. Um I just like put just to point out at the end, Karo like Karo was only 48 seconds off world record. Oh, wow. Which like and like I I know like like Snappy is a bit more like on rail, so I feel like I guess it, in theory it'd be easier, but still it's like forty eight seconds off world record for a marathon, and that's impressive. Like, you got to, I mean, got how things go the right way, I assume as well. But you got to play well to do that. A fair play there. And then there's also uh, Runchan uh, DX doing Crystal any percent witchless. With a through twenty four fifty one, so with Ente, apparently so. <laughs> <laughs> apparently so. I, I'm not familiar with if anyone in chat is familiar with how the Japanese run goes with this, but it's Raikou in in English. Uh, they use different minips. Uh, the English yeah. minips don't work on Japanese, I'm pretty sure. So I think there just isn't a Raikou minip. As far as I'm aware, at least. Because I, I know um, Entei is technically, like, absolute best case scenario better. But just it relies, it relies on Iron Tail. So no one does anything. <laughs> like, why, why would you subject yourself to that whenever you have Raikou? <laughs> That'll go fast. Yeah, I, 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 don't like, I don't like Iron Tail in BDSP. It's mean. It is. Places. Yeah, it's really <laughs> bad in this game. Apparently, like Raikou is just so much better. But well, I, the reason I why I don't like it is it's a completely different reason than this run. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. Well, my guess yeah. is uh, Raikou Nip just doesn't exist in the Japanese version. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. That's a little point. Is that three copies of Crystal there? In the Looks like it. Yeah. Fair play. I would like one. I've never played Crystal. I don't think I've ever played Crystal, actually, to be fair. I played Gold. Is he just stacking up merchandise? I think so, yeah. <laughs> 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 like, I, I got fine. to the end of the ruin. <laughs> yeah. I mean, fair enough. Uh, and then one last run, which was um, Ray Zorro doing... Uh, I'm going to assume with the fact that this is yeah side three. So I'm going to assume it's brilliant diamond. Uh any percent glitchless. Um you can't hear the audio playing through. But I believe this ended up using like they played without audio, like in game audio. I think it just has like lo fi. I think they just played lo fi in the uh play for the marathon. So that that's the alternative for BGSP. You can either Play with the in-game uh, in-game music in this time, or you can be quicker, but then randomly play uh, a fight or whatever would work. Which I guess I don't know. I don't know which one I'd prefer personally. 
I mean, I guess that's because you prefer the in-game well, uh, in-game music. As you use Absolutely. that. I, I, I just play with the in-game music. Fantastic. Yeah, for a marathon, for a marathon, I'd use the music, but for PD attempts, I don't. Yeah. I do both of the music. <laughs> <laughs> And then that that is the last marathon run, but the marathon's coming up. Uh, at the moment, there's like two different marathons, which I mean, with one of them being GDQ, to be fair, uh, there might be. I think, as you could mention, this last month that just typically less marathons in and around it, just because it is that big of a marathon. But for the twelfth, as I scroll down to that. Is Keys versus 360 Prism versus Shen with Crystal Key and Randomizer uh, Randomizer at at least at my time, assuming it's not being changed. It has been changed slightly, um, but just after 4 p.m. UK time. And then on the 14th, at what sh should be coming up to like 5 to 9, unless that's changed, I've scrolled past it. Uh, 10 minutes early, so I guess something's changed estimate wise. But it's around quarter to nine on the 14th. Uh, Pokemon Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, or Omega Ruby versus Alpha Sapphire, I should say. Uh, in percent race between Wartab and Truly. And then, last but not least, for UKSG Winter 2022 on the 30th at around half four in the afternoon. Uh, Shifty doing Pokemon Red, any percent glitchless, blindfolded. So, it'd be pretty solid. Pretty solid there. Even though there isn't too many marathon runs coming up this month, some pretty solid ones. And then, looking at the, the cool things to mention. Argo uh, Soul Silver, Mittless Tournament finished. Worst of one, affected Ashes in second, then Tucker in third. Let's go. How much of that did you watch? Uh, basically it. none. I watched the final. Okay, cool. How was the final? The, the final was relatively close within the parts that I watched. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I watched a bit. Yeah. yeah, obviously with Heart Gold to Silver, uh, Manipolis, so much of your time comes purely down to the Magikarp stuff. Um... Oh, yeah. But yeah, it, it, like overall, the tournament was a part. Like, I, I know people that watch like every single race. Um, uh, like, apparently, the tournament was like absolutely phenomenal. That's and I funny. know Worcester got a trophy. Uh, JT made a trophy, uh, <laughs> and was and sent a photo into the Discord and was like, "Yeah, whoever wins, I'm." That like, he he got this like little um, golden engraved trophy. It was like Hard Gold to Silver Minute Plus 2021 champion or whatever on it. Uh, it was really really cool. Fair play. Also, at least good for JT as well. Wouldn't have to shift it too far because yeah, probably if anyone else that, would, it yeah. would be the massive. He literally thing. said that in the chat. It was like, oh, worst are coming in clutch with the shipping costs. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, fair play there. Uh, and then the other thing to mention next week at this point, Barrier Blitz Emerald, uh, Shiru, Mapwing, Amoeba, Wave, Pokeguy, who was uh, in here earlier, and Kurt. Uh, gonna be competing. I think as of right now, I didn't. I wonder if I can actually just chill it for a bit. And by chill it for a bit, I mean bring up the, the tournament overview. I believe it's at like one thousand one hundred uh, dollars at the moment. Yeah, one thousand one hundred and one dollars and sixty nine cents. Is cents right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so that's that is you, Jordan. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Actually, te five hundred. Technically, that fifty dollars is uh, fifty of that is from um, from May because I asked her to make the trailer. And it's kind of payment. It's just because like, I like to pay for things. Uh, she just said put it towards Blitz, so we did. So, but yeah. Either way, um, quite a lot of money. I think that means based on the current percentage splits. Uh, based on payouts, because it doesn't show. Oh, it does show the values. Good. I don't have to do math. Uh, it's, it's like a minimum hundred dollars, almost. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 
pretty cool indeed. So yeah, if you if you uh, just want to look at the rules at the very least, they are in there in that link. But are we gonna see a self-proclaimed two twenty nine? Oh, maybe. <laughs> Maybe, hopefully so. That would be, to be fair, I'd find it hilarious if Amiibo just put two, I uh, just stopped the time at 2.29, still finished the run, like, it wasn't finished for the run, but just stopped it. I, but, but it's self-proclaimed. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would make it self-proclaimed for Amiibo. <laughs> but yeah, so that is happening next week. It will be, from the looks of it, potentially 19 hours each day, uh, because it's going to be staggered start times. So, there's going to be a bit of Emerald. Just a bit of Emerald uh, next week. Only a little bit, though. Just a bit, yeah. And that'll be that'll be on this Twitch channel. That will, you... yes. <laughs> yep. I will 229. Someone cl someone screenshot Mockwing right now. Screenshot it. <laughs> post it. Post it when it happens. Yeah, no, if I'm someone else gets sure it, change the, the name. Kappa's not included there. Yeah, get rid of the... Don't include the Kappa. Yeah. Screenshot it. Done. Post it. If someone else gets 229, just cover Magwing and then write. Write me back. <laughs> just write, screen cap me now, write me and say you got a self game one. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so on to the Leader World Roundup. Um, once again, I'm just going to scroll and if anything stands out, point out. Though, third for. Oh god, it's that name again. <laughs> VG Magic. <laughs> I don't know how to say your name, I'm sorry. But 158.30 in any single, which is classic. Uh, yeah. Just thought, because it's been shown in the uh, Discord. How far behind is it in Discord? Like, barely. Okay, cool. So then, point out, I'll yeah, we'll scroll slowly. So actually, yeah, Gym Lead, like, fourth in Gym Leader, Castle Round 1. Fair play, 135-24. Hold on a second, has someone done the new gold, silver, any percent route? That's what I was just, I was about to say has that. Has someone yeah. else finally done a run of it? Apparently so. Because I'm pretty sure uh, Enter was the only person who had done it for, like, ages. I don't know how long. Well, I think... And to go the world record, was it last month or was it the month before when we covered that? Three months ago. Oh, three months? Three oh. Months oh. Oh. Oh my god, there's been a couple people that have eight minute times. Where have I been? Yeah, there's four eight minutes. I think the other end also have eight minute times. Pokey Guy's time is the best one with the old route. Yeah, I'm I pretty think. sure that's true. What time's that? Stocky has on eleven fifty eight. I don't know if that's old or new. Just uh, based Pokey on the guys, date, yeah. Uh Pokey Guys was twelve forty nine. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool. Uh I mean we could have Xargon for Coliseum, but Sparkle Lantern falls with a three thirty two oh six. I believe Sparkle started like I mean, I don't know how much practice uh that they did like prior to the like prior to doing runs. But I think it was like two weeks before getting that time. No, say, Sparkle just picks up games utterly like just gets like a really good time really quickly and then just moves on to another one. Yeah, I, I didn't even know he was playing. Call Neither did I. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah. I I think it was I think it was like an offline run as well. Oh, I don't, oh, I don't. I don't think I have audio set up to do a few. But basically, it's just it's. I just got. Let me just put up. So, uh, I'm just gonna put it in chat. Fourteen days ago was his first Coliseum stream. <laughs> Fourteen saying, days ago, say, saying "Cool game, Santa got me." So I don't know if he actually got it for Christmas <laughs> or if it's just a joke. But either way, <laughs> really funny. <laughs> Running against blank splits and got a four twenty five that day. That's so three thirty two already is pretty ridiculous. That's mad improvement in that time space. Yeah, and there's a pop off in there, like because like again, it was an offline run. I assume Mike was off, but then he just unmute the mic and 
falls off and apparently it scared Ava who was uh, verifying it or made Ava jump. <laughs> Can we talk about how out of the blue Exarian coming back to Pokemon was, by the way? Oh yeah, that as well. Uh, just that was fact. just cool. Like I just looked at Twitch one day and Exarian was doing Pokemon. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. And, and yeah, oh yeah, cause I didn't mention it as well. That was like the fourth day of attempts. Yeah, Exarian got that really quick. Yeah. Which, again, I don't know how much the lab death warp helped specifically. Oh, but, I mean, you I still think... need a very good run. I just assume. Oh, I saw Pacebin about this. I think it's I... like less than 10 seconds or something. I saw the Pacebin for the Makahita. With assuming it was using lab, uh, lab death warp strats. I don't think it, at least from when I looked at it, it didn't mention how much well, that the, the time I heard was like seven seconds, I'm pretty sure. I could be completely wrong. It's a side game that I've never played in my life, so don't take my word on that. But I mean, it might be a coincidence, but Makahita says seven seconds. Who knows? But either way, yeah. Either way. Either way, Route Change got record. <laughs> yeah, Route Change did get world record, and it was. Again, it beat Bolton's uh, record, which is considered one of the hardest to beat prior to those to those changes. The math gene is getting um, a 202 in Fire Red Leaf Green as well. I'm I've... pretty sure they haven't been around that long, at least not to my knowledge. Let's have a look. Because <laughs> I've not heard the name either. Yeah. To my uh, knowledge, they've been they've been doing offline mostly because I don't think they have a capture. They, they card. don't have a capture card. And I think someone convinced them to do like potato cam. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure they don't use live split either. They just open. Yeah, it's like an Excel spreadsheet on their computer, and they just input the times. It's really really epic. <laughs> That's I mean, yeah. fantastic. I mean, yeah, fair play, and it's. I mean, it's bulletproof. You don't need a fancy setup to do runs. Yeah, and you can get really good times doing it as well. My assumption is also the fact that they're either holding the camera or they're holding the SP because it is moving around a bit, but still keeping it in frame, which is good. Yeah, I I think it's SP with, with both hands, so the camera's like set up and then just uses the SP normally, which is exceptional. Yeah, like this this is cool. This it's actually cool. It when, is like, really cool. Like, if you if you want the speed run, just go for it. Even if you like, if like the equipment's the thing that's putting you off. When there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. <laughs> and and even more so, what's what's even more um, mind boggling to me now is you nearly need a two o two to be in the top ten of Fire Red Leaf Green. Like that's... that has progressed so much. Yep. Ninth place is Juan Lee with a two or three flat. Oh yeah. And like then that, tenth that's is ridiculous. Yeah, and then like tenth is two or three oh three. I, I remember whenever Paul Scott two to like the first two oh two and that was like, oh my god. <laughs> and now you nearly need one to be top ten. Yeah, as well, that took like a was it over a year for Pulse to get that as well? Oh, Pulse was that. That was a massive grind for Pulse. Yeah. Yeah. So, like... And now he subsequently hits the game, which I cannot blame him yeah. for. <laughs> yeah, do not blame. I understand. <laughs> we'll also point out, though, uh, second for Elite Four Round 2 with, uh, for the Math Genius as well, with a 330-52. That run was actually very nearly record. I actually watched a, a bit of this run live. Um, it was like, it was quite a, it was a decent bit ahead out of the first round, I think, and had record potential into round two, but it, you ne he needed like a perfect round two to get record, right. which sadly didn't happen. But um, that, that was a, a really, really good run until the very end. Which is insane because the Elite Four round two record is one of the other... Um, really hard to beat records in PSR. That's like, it's like one of the other top ones up there with the Colo record. Yeah. I guess also like 80% Japanese emulator world record. I assume that's probably the only run. So. 
Uh, yeah, it's one of them, yeah. Because I, I know Ringo has a uh, sub 2, I think, on console. Not sure. Yeah, there's 14 console Japanese times and 5 emulator. Oh, it's a 5? 4 emulator. Oh, 4. Still, uh, that's more than I thought. I Yeah, I thought that would be the only one as well. That would be 5th uh, if you combine the leaderboards. Still pretty solid. Pretty, yeah. Pretty Still solid. Very solid yeah. Uh, speaking of emulator though as well, Adenam with the Emerald any percent glitchless like English emulator world record 23551 which I believe Adenam who is in chat like you've been working you've been practicing for a while but yeah I don't think you've done runs for that long have you? I mean I'm asking this the amount of also just left at this point to be fair this could be awkward but <laughs> <laughs> As far as I'm aware, that is the case. Secondary Second runs, there we go. Yeah. I wasn't just talking to no one. Great. Congrats with that. That's awesome. And then once some two months of practice before that, fair, fair. And then I'm also going to be commentating for Barrier Blitz, as is Skoa and Dian. Etiquette, oh. do you also want to? <laughs> if I'm needed. <laughs> I don't I don't know much of anything about Emerald. Like I know Hoenn and I could probably BS my way through Sapphire because of Oras, but I know Emerald is very different, so Yeah. That yeah, that's fair. I think I you're in the same position, aren't you actually? But yeah, I just I'm only put doing you in. The one, the one slot, <laughs> yeah. And that's like potentially one of the shorter slots too, so that's, that's yeah. really cool. We're not gonna talk about my knowledge on the game. <laughs> you have Jeffrey. You've got the most unique knowledge of the game in the commentary. I think, as far as like, yeah, I, I think of like the entire lineup. I have probably the strangest set of knowledge, <laughs> and that unique perspective is going to be great. You'd be like, this is not what they do in the Japanese run. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to shout the Pokemon next to you time. Uh, it's I believe it's the only any percent Japanese time on the boards, but. From what I know, they didn't do the minip. Like, cause oh, like wow. you normally minip, like you do like a minip for getting the EV. Or and then just like I don't know well, I can't even remember what the other thing that's used. Uh, no, yeah, no, he didn't check Teddy Ursa stats. That was it. He didn't check the Teddy Ursa stats. It was apparently not great. They still finished the run. The fair play. Uh uh, I'm going to shout out uh, Mythsy doing oh. any percent on Ruby Sapphire. Is that Ruby Sapphire any percent? Or is uh, this that's Emerald. I, I, the, someone, I think, did uh, Ruby Sapphire any percent on Emulator as well. I don't know if it was this month or it was like ages ago. It must have been a while ago. No, well, Even so, pe people starting to do these categories on... Um, on emulator is really cool because I know for a while it was only um, console runners that were doing things. Isra. Oh, Isra. Cool. On the looks of it. Uh, for Sapphire. Yeah, you know. my, my, yeah, don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. I just remember seeing all the. I, I remember well, seeing. Yeah. The, the point still stands, though. It is cool. Yeah, like, it's cool that people are finally starting to do these on emulator as well. I guess the one thing I just want to look at, why is it not an English category for 8%? I assume you just can't do it. Because the glitch, the duplication glitch does not work on English. You okay. Basically, you dupe a rare candy and go the whole way to level 100 and just sweep the game. It doesn't work on um, the English copy. Yeah, so... You can also do, like, biking on water and stuff, but it barely saves, like, any time. Because the amount of time it takes to set up. Yeah. The, uh... It would be, like more technically correct if it was like any percent on english and no glitchless category for english but like that yeah. wouldn't make sense with the that would be so yeah. confusing to look That'd at be the beyond confusing yeah <laughs> any percent in brackets glitchless <laughs> <laughs> and also glitchless yeah kind of. <laughs> uh, fair. uh Diamond Pearl, sec like second for Alvo on uh, 8% glitchless English emulator. I don't know in terms of like that time. Oh, 
Okay, I guess that's the context. It's like 37 minutes behind. Which is also 30 plus minutes behind the console time. So I think it's yeah. just like a smaller it's, board. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, oh my god, English just completely failed me there. <laughs> uh, the console record is like 340, I think. Okay. Yeah. But Al Albo um, is one of the top hard golds to silver glitches runners, so I, I think he's probably just learning the ropes of diamond glitches because that that route is annoying to learn. Uh, Etika, I think you did it for a while. I, I did it. I didn't want to do Lucky Egg, so I did the old like Chimchar to Palkia route. Um. Oh, because you would have done but, it before they made the save and quit Lucky Egg, right? Yeah, it was before they did save and quit. So I'm going to go back to it at some point. That means you should come back. Especially now that I've done BDSP. Like, because one of my problems, uh, this is completely unrelated, but one of my problems when I'm learning a game is I played like Gens 1 and 2 casually, and then I played Oras and Up casually. <laughs> and so like, I didn't know Sinnoh at all. And so it's like, go from you know, heart home to Veilstone. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that. So I'd have to like, <laughs> I literally had maps where I drew the like movement path. Um, but now that I've played BDSP, like I know, and the game's a one-to-one -one remake, uh, I, yeah. I know like the routes and stuff. So I, I can, you know, I'll probably be more, uh, more apt to, to do better. And then I'll, I'll learn like the lucky egg save and quit stuff as well as probably try to learn extended manip at some point. I love how I pitch this uh, category, and it's like one of three DS ones that I've literally never done before. <laughs> or rather, no, I did learn this and got bored and stopped doing it. <laughs> but still run the category, it's good. Just not for me. I looking at this now. Dude, dude, dude. Oh, Tucker's uh, Platinum Glitchless PV. This was like a few seconds or something as a PV. It was like not that many. It was just a few. I, I know Tucker's like not completely happy with the run as well, but it's still really cool to see times going down. That was with Chimchar, by the way. Another <laughs> Chimchar run. As you pointed that one out, then, in that case. You know, I see. It's actually more rare to point out a run and go, "Hey, that's a pit up run at this point," because <laughs> uh, most of the board is uh, Chimchar. At least most, I think, like seven of the top ten is Chimchar now. Uh, for Explorers of Sky, second for Cabral in Beat Dark Ride Wind Mail. On emulator, yeah, it's it's a like twenty minutes behind the world record, but like beat dark right is such it's, a long category. Yeah, <laughs> I'll I'll always give credit to like a lot like people sitting down to do a long category. I love those games so much. Explorers of Sky is such a game. I never played Explorers of Sky. I played the Spanish version of um what Explorers <laughs> of was it time I had? I think it was time. Um, Why? <laughs> Why? Because I bought it in Spain. I mean, fair enough. Did I you mean, understand? I should point. I'd say it's a Spanish version. It's only Spanish based on like cards. Like PAL cartridges will still translate to English. So I probably well, I when I say the Spanish version, I just mean that the cartridge itself is Spanish. The game's still English. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were about to tell me you just played the game in Spanish. I was like, well, did you understand it? I mean, to be fair, when I was younger, I did play Hard Gold Soul Silver in Japanese without understanding anything. Fair enough. Action replay. You know, not action replay. Um, our fall cards, even. You gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. Illegality. <laughs> <laughs> um, RDA with more rumble. All the rumble, <laughs> more rumble records. Two because like, all of them wasn't enough. Yes, apparently so. <laughs> so many, so much rumble. Oh, not even enough rumble that they had to go into misc for it. 
<laughs> We're done with the main categories. Also, with the main categories, complete the game console and percent no possible drill record at 202.39. Isn't this We Wear Mystery Dungeon like a recent thing people have started doing? It It is, it seems like. I'll, I'm going to bring it up again. Um, I was not a clue about the run, but... Oh, I, did, I didn't even know this game existed. I saw it on SRC whenever I first joined PSR, and no one had runs of it for years. <laughs> So, as from my understanding of this, it's it was a Japanese only release, and this is like an English translation that's being done. Of it. Yeah. So. Interesting. Part of the reason why I assume not many people are around it, but it's still cool. Yeah, it's just, it, I, I, well, I find it really funny that it was like a completely empty board for like years. Yeah. Also, are they the are they the rumble? The like the rumble sprites. They look. Oh, I was supposed to say that it looks kind of like like that that Ryloth. <laughs> oh yeah. It's, it's yeah. That that has right? to be. Look at Sneasel. Oh my god, the munch lags. <laughs> Wait, the normal looks ridiculous. Oh my god. <laughs> The room was pretty some brilliant. That shuckle. I love the shuckle. Look at that's <laughs> just the legs. I, I love how Swine Up looks no different. <laughs> that <laughs> is looks also identical. <laughs> that one's probably just like, alright, this model's close enough, we'll just take this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair. Uh, do, do, do. But yeah, any percent uh, English for secure account, 5758. Yeah, well, hey, that is a very similar length to Diamond Any Percent. Clearly, that means you should try that out, Skull. That's a false equivalency. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is an absolutely false equivalency <laughs> that I'm not going to take on board. Okay, so a bit of context for the English patch. That was only apparently brought in until, like, that was only became a thing last year. Thank you, Swift, and hello, Swift. Uh, do, do, do. Right out to Swift, Olu. And percent passwords as well for Mystery Dungeon WiiWare, 5737. By Shady Gamer. It's like, it's like Shady Gamer Secure. Who is it? Whom? I feel like Whom's probably in there. I feel like there's another runner, but I don't remember the name, which I apologize. But they, they have... On, on the Japanese side, Shigume, uh, Shigume. I feel like they hold almost all the PMD world records. Oh, are you talking about uh, other English PMD runners? Yeah. Mozzarella cheese? Oh, yeah, cheese, of course. Yeah. Uh, che cheese with the long characters, especially. That's. Go. Oh. Gen, gen Gen five <laughs> revenue. Uh, that that is that indeed run? Gen five. <laughs> how, how, like, how, is that like? I don't know. <laughs> I, I know for a fact that fourth place has changed hands like so many times in um, Black White One Japanese. Like fourth place is just forever changing. <laughs> A new runner comes on, gets fourth place, and then never submits another run ever again. Like, I've seen so many Japanese runs, they just someone comes in, submits one, and then never does it again. It's kind of sad. Because <laughs> um, I feel like the Japanese side of, especially if the DS games, like, gets like no competition at all. It's like Dexy and Buster, and that's pretty much it. So it would be really cool to see a lot of the other runners. Has Ringo ever jumped DS into games. DS games? I know he does, uh, like, GBA stuff. Just Ringo three, yeah. did Heart Gold, Soul Silver. Okay. He he, he actually had the uh, Heart Gold, Soul Silver glitchless record for, like, a few days, and then Dexy went back and got it again. <laughs> like, Dexy is just absolutely insane. Dexy's so good at every game and every category, except for the glitched ones that he refuses to play. So, 
<laughs> like he straight up refused to play the glitched ones. Oh, cool. There's Cram with 312 in Black White 2. Oh yeah. That's that's late, yeah. Cram has not been playing uh Y2 for that long. But Cram is absolutely cracked at Gen 5. He's so good. I was just gonna say, Cram has the world record for Black White 1, right? Correct. Yeah. And now he's coming to Y2. And I'm a little scared. Uh you sweating. Uh, if, if he gets 311, I definitely will be, yeah. <laughs> Point out the fourth uh, Pokemon Conquest, uh, Cruel, with any percent passwords, 233. Also during Snow Warning. Uh, second place for Lost Thomas in any percent one mail English uh, NTR slash MU. For gate, like, Mystery Dungeon Gates to Infinity. I have no context whether that's a long run or not, <laughs> or if it's like one of those MCs, because it's all like the other time was a 744. Yeah, oh yeah, no, is, yeah this is just a really long run, alright. <laughs> yeah, Gates is a really long game. How, it's how it's also that. not that good of a game, but it is pretty long. <laughs> okay, I'll rephrase. It, it's a good game, but it's not a good Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hulk as well. Sorry, Hulk. I don't know if he like how he watches this. Not but sorry either way. <laughs> uh in May in twenty first for uh XY three fifty seven uh forty three. You know, like May started started doing runs this month, I believe. Uh, shout out to, yeah, shout out to Sanjan's improvement yeah. rate in Oras. It was like super fast. It was like yeah, like that was a super fast three oh seven. Another reason why you should just go to Omega Ruby and not touch Alpha Sapphire. <laughs> per Alpha yeah. Sapphire, man. Omega Ruby is definitely easier to get a better time on. But, like, there gets to a point where the resets are so much worse in Omega Ruby than in Alpha Sapphire, so. Isn't that game, like, dead, though? Like, isn't Poke Guys run, like, ridiculous? Yeah, it's. It's matchable for sure. I mean, it's beatable, but, like. Oh, yeah, it's, it's always beatable. But... Every, everyone's always beatable. <laughs> it's just, uh. Yeah, it'll be, oh, it'll but... be tough. I think. I think Truly's run in Alpha Sapphire is probably the more beatable one, but that is so hard to beat because it just requires such a good mid game. Um, if if Truly had IMAX's mid game, basically, that run would oh, be that's almost a name beatable. I haven't heard in a while. Yeah, I mean it's kind of mad how it was up until uh, Uper like beat mm -hmm. that time like. It was like it took super, which is like what six years after to be IMAX, yeah. was it? Yeah, because IMAX's run was from April 2014 and it was stood until sometime last year, yeah. Yeah, it was Sinstar, yeah. No, well, no. so Sinstar beat the Omega Ruby one uh, a couple oh, years right. ago, but it was the, the Alpha Sapphire one was not until five up. I got it, um, got like a 305. And the, the funniest part about that was. Uh, IMAX's run was so early. It was before they knew they could, or before it was known to be faster that you could just die to Rival Five. So like, oh my god, beats Rival Five. Wastes, yeah, it wastes like thirty seconds beating Rival Five. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, that's insane. The other run I didn't mention for Super Mystery Dungeon because there was three world records for it. Secure account with 80% no one mail English emulator. 350, oh, 530, sorry. Uh, again. Super Mystery Dungeon popped off this month, I guess. <laughs> Yo, someone did an Ultra Sun Ultra Moon run. <laughs> oh my god. 
Devin Kennedy, 705.16. Well done. Uh, let's go Pikachu. Katni's involved with a 302.58. That's a great time. Yeah, that's better than the, uh, the Eevee time. I think Randall just picked up the game too. Randall in 10th with the 307. Yeah, it's a, that's yeah. a solid time. I think only like a couple weeks of playing. Yeah, it's really good for the amount of time he's played. Oh, I don't think Randall has a capture card either. No, I think... Oh, oh my yeah. god. <laughs> no, you don't even know how much time this wastes. So this is actually probably... Oh wait, this is actually time loss? Yeah, playing Undocked is so bad. Like, go to Viridian Forest and just watch how bad it is. Uh, I can't tell with the angle. Uh, uh, that's too far, that's too far. It's like way at the like, start. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, like run around here. Yeah, I think it's right there. Also, apparently Randall has a 305 now anyway. <laughs> oh, okay, that's sick. Like, just watch how laggy this is going through, just running through with a lure up in Viridian Forest. It's so bad. Right, you yeah. couldn't really tell. I promise. You couldn't really bad. tell. <laughs> um, like this and the the fog effect in Koga's gym is also really bad. Oh um, yeah, I can imagine the fog is awful. I just also want to point out volume gonna sound sus. But trust me, turn it down. <laughs> but yeah, question is, does his new time have a capture card? Question. I'm gonna Bob. guess no. <laughs> I saw, I saw him posting like a screenshot of a, uh, what's it called? One of his like Starmies or something recently, and it was still potato cam. So I'm guessing it doesn't. That's how much does Undocked lose? And let's go. I don't know if it's actually been like really figured out. It's probably. Uh, um. Probably like less than a minute, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was over 30 seconds. Yeah, I suppose say it. probably around the realm of 30 seconds. And the funny thing is, Undocked is faster in Sword and Shield because that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's the strap potato cam world record for Sword and Shield. I want to say there was somebody doing it when the game first came out. They didn't ever get the record, but it was, I want to say it was Irutaka was doing it. For a while, that's it. It's so hard to make records mine. Good. Gonna beat Jordan's shield of time without them. <laughs> I can't wait for the moment where I have to undock my switch just to get myself <laughs> back. That that's one of those things that I think like most people, or at least people like who've been in the community for a while, know, and nobody does. It's one of those things. It's just like. Hey, let's all just agree no one break this barrier and, that and start thing doing no, it. That, well. that sounds like a barrier oh. actually break. Gen what 1 with this like yellow playing on like an original on Game, Boy. Game Boy. Yeah, yeah, but then you can't do manips. Or you'd have to have different manips, I guess. Just find a manip for that, yeah. That, <laughs> I, I, I remember like I someone told me that like three years ago and that, that bit of information is just retained as like someone needs to do this someday. And it won't be me because I'm never playing Gen 1, but Yeah, all the color lag goes out the window in yellow. Someone's gotta do it. Yeah, uh I think I actually scrolled stuff there. Uh fault for a a, a Dijo. Uh Eight percent sold in English, one point two plus. Actually, let's ignore that. Let's look at the other thing. Yoshida Shu was a doing one point not to one point one point one point one run, and then also the same for Gons. I don't know if that's like mislabeled or not. Switch light. Oh, that'll be undocked then. Oh, yeah, that would be undocked. <laughs> oh, <laughs> who knows if the light makes a difference? But and they show the version. Oh, because it was uh, it was on physical. That's why. Oh, don't look. Oh, that's still good. That's There's still also good. physical time loss as well. Sad. That that's one of the reasons I don't run this game is because physical time loss. 
Yeah. Oh, oh my god, that's recorded with an iPhone camera. <laughs> Just thinking, but yeah. Uh, Etienne in ninth with a 4.14.45. As you know, it's Candy Floss. Let's go. Candy Floss Supremacy. Ooh, right, I need a case goer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 80% shield Japanese world record for a Pyojo, which I don't actually think is the Japanese world record. I believe there's a 412 or something like that, but it doesn't have a board on the Japanese on the Japanese leaderboards. They just have it there. My knowledge is correct. At least recorded. Oh, like the, uh, the Japanese wiki. Yeah, the wiki. Oh, uh, god, gotcha. website. It's fun to scroll around. Every I have then. that bookmarked. Yeah. On my Chrome. I have, I, have uh, a, I have a bookmark as well. I don't have a bookmarked, but I have a Discord channel I just have on my Discord where I just throw links and it's in there. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have one of those. <laughs> I should get that. I should do something like that. Uh, Fun place to throw copy pastes in whenever you can't be bothered researching things. You can host images there too, it's just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at like, because I noticed in chat earlier, I assume, I feel like Shelty would have something like that. Seeing as I saw like, the pooches earlier. Yeah. I saw it. Can't, but can't, can't, like, ugh, words. God, never mind. I'm just going to move on. Let's just forget. Let's just pretend nothing happened. Six oh my god. Per... Apparently there's a 407 on Japanese. Any percent one point two plus no DLC yeah. one four oh seven ten. Uh maybe that sword. What's that? Oh it is oh yeah, it's four thirteen on shield and it's four oh seven on uh sword. The funny thing uh, about this is when you have the the oh, wiki okay. Like translated using Google Chrome, it says Pokemon Sword Shield any percent cotton candy record list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nine tails plus cotton candy. It's not it's not wrong. <laughs> it's technically not wrong. That is true. Yeah, sixth on new snap for Kojia. For the 235 uh, 46. Apparently skipping Xerneas. Which is a thing. And then brilliant diamonds. Look at all the times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Pretty that's all of them. <laughs> Read them yourself. Read them yourself. I'll give you a I'll give you a moment, take note. It'll be on the test. Later. Um it is worth mentioning, just real quick, the fourth place in Brilliant Diamond, T Pat's run. Um the three thirty three. Yeah. I believe that's the fastest Scyther time. All the times above it are Kaza related. That that I... run looks like it's with Kaza, actually. Yeah, first time oh, Kaza. <laughs> Rip Scyther. Alright. No, he, he has a 334 then, I think is the best time with Scyther. But yeah. I would like to point out, I mean, I, I, I don't know if so. I feel like that would be the fastest uh, physical. Physical. Yeah, that, that is fast. I Pat does like to use physical. I don't know if anyone else uses it as well. I feel like Ryzkin might actually. I don't know. Uh, actually, you might be right. I know Ryzkin had physical on, I want to say Sword and Shield. Yeah. It's one of those two. He, he's on digital for Brilliant Diamond. <laughs> okay. All right. So, probably T Pat then. Cool. And then there's the, the, the No Turbo for the Japanese. And then there's also Turbo now for English. <laughs> and then Turbo for Japanese. And then no Turbo English any percent. <laughs> uh, was it yeah. Fourth Horn then? I guess that was the first. Fourth Horn, yeah. Who I, I've never heard of then, but cool. Yeah, or the cool thing have... about... Yeah, sorry. I was going to say, the cool thing about the any percent run is it attracted so many people, like, from even outside of Pokemon. Like, yeah. obviously, Buster's been around Pokemon forever, but, like, there's definitely a, a bunch of new names, and 
as you can see by like the top 10 being almost all Japanese, um, the Japanese community really took off with it as well. I on also don't version, recognize the... most of the names. Yeah, on yeah. the English version as well, specifically. Yeah. I mean, like, like the the Japanese, like the glitches are, I believe, all the same. In, in obviously they would be the same in Japanese because it's not like the games are the same. It's just overlaid differently. Um, but the the fastest time for Japanese any percent is only a twenty minute time. I, I think everyone's just like competing on English. Remember, they have the credits as well. Oh, they have credits as yeah. well. That probably oh, doesn't. Yeah. Yep, there's the Japanese with no turbo, and then English and Japanese with turbo. From the sounds of it, I know there's discussions about merging Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. We'll see, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. That's just how it is. <laughs> we'll see what happens. And then Iron. Anything specific to point out in the band games? Because, I mean, I see Storchi there with 80% no save corruption, World Record. Yeah, that, that game, as you can tell, you can imagine, is to do that glitch list would be a mess. Because it's Kaizo. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Stocky and Amber have been running that a tiny bit, but not much recently. So. Yeah, don't know too much about the run. It's just it's no safe corruption. Yeah. My favorite fine game, Pokey Clicker. Poker Clicker seems like it's been popping off. And there's also like an auto clicker as well, which is a nice. I, I've considered looking into Poker Clicker just because it seems like a short run I could do. No, dude. <laughs> but I oh. I don't have time right now to just do normal Pokemon. I mean, you should play sad. Diamond Pearl any percent. No. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Actually, I think I do need to do. I still need to do one run of that, actually, but. Ignoring that. Yes, yeah, Swift joined I, me. I mean, Swift's saying manipulous. I that said you're playing a DS game. Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What if I yeah, play? Going, going back... hmm? Sorry, going back to the Japan Japanese any percent glitched. It's about a fifteen forty five, fifteen forty six, without okay. the credits, just for comparison. Uh, there's like a minute difference still. Yeah. Also, Skoa, if I if I play Fire Red Leaf Green on my DS, does that count? <laughs> uh, um, I I wouldn't do that. Don't worry. Yeah. I mean, well, Skoa, aren't you like the only DS? Like, aren't you the only like Emerald Runner or something that did it on DS? Uh I have the DS Sapphire record, and I'm That's pretty it. sure Dexy runs on DS and Emerald Japanese, so. Even though DS is slower by about four seconds per hour, so because it runs at a lower frame rate, so that's like the only difference. This is just such weird little things. Like, like yep. you have to know, or like you have to just find out randomly at some point. It's because With, like, I, I feel like every Pokemon run has that. I, I think it's because the DS like down clocks or something. It's speed, and then the GBA game runs at a slower frame rate. <laughs> oh wait, yeah, the GBP. The Jester runs it on DS. Emeralds on DS. Oh my god, it's like a solid time. That's true. Yeah, because <laughs> what if his screens doesn't work? That's right. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he has to play with his uh, his GBA thing set on like the bottom screen. It's either the top or the bottom. Because the other one doesn't work. <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, yeah, many Poker Clicker world records. This thing we want to point out: one five one Pokemon Auto Clicker codes. Three nineteen oh eight by Kagi and Nikki. That's Actually, also game for that long. Actually, also Kanto Champion Clickless Codeless. 1 hour 42 31.1. Yeah, I love playing Poker Clicker, but not clicking. From what I understand, like, as I, I think it was May that told me this, it's the clickless, it's just you can't click the Pokemon, and there's like a mod or something. 
Or like there's an option you can choose. So you can still like click the other things that you need to click. It's just it's not going to make a difference with. Pokemon. You cannot use the mice if your hand is on the mice. Your run is invalid. Mouse count. <laughs> And then one badge for crystal clear to round out fan games. And uh oh Eisen Stonks two fifty-three. Yeah, it's an open world hack, so you kinda just find the fastest badge to go for. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'd never heard of Crystal Clear before. Or like well I've never seen Crystal Clear before. I guess I should say. And then category extensions. <laughs> this is another one. Look, <laughs> look at the many different things people have done and routed. Which is cool. I like Custom Stars and Snorlax though, as an idea. I think Panther uh, 0001 with a 22406. Yo, Bud Cashy Contest, Gold Silver, World Record by Good Job Mr. 2%. 4731. Old Train is uh, in Crystal by a concert with a 73739. Of course, one they did Old Main Pokes Prime Ape with a 23937. If it was going to be anyone, it was going to be one Lee. Oh, I didn't realize he submitted that. I don't know if that's a new. That probably is a new run. I know we we raced that. A few of us raced it like a year ago. It was so bad, but so fun. <laughs> but he must have done another run. I won platinum and uh, minute plus any percent. Uh, Jimmy with a three twenty two thirty six. This right is interesting. <laughs> this uses Golduck the whole way. So does, despite Manipt not actually managing to get Golduck into its right yet, still, uh, after the length of time it's been theorized, uh, Maniplus is doing it and taking it the whole way. Which is really cool to see. Yeah, like level 33 damp Golduck. Those Damn, are a combination nice. of words. <laughs> you, you you can get up to level 40 Goldock, but getting Goldock alone is like good enough, I'm pretty sure, because it's not guaranteed encounter there. There's like loads of Psyducks and stuff, so. Oh, right. You, you want to just get Goldock and go. But I know nothing about the right. I don't intend to play it, but. Uh, the second place in Harko to Silver, Manipolis yeah. going to this. Again, like that, people are closing in on Tucker's time. There, there's a few um, world record contenders, a few people sitting on like 344s now, I think, getting closer to Tucker. Oh, who got that? I, I don't even know how to pronounce the name. <laughs> I, I, I specifically avoided saying the name because I have no idea how to pronounce it. I assume it's like Bungie or something. Oh, I see. Says All right, cool. <laughs> that, I guess, like, I get, now that it's been said, that makes sense. But like, yeah, it does. But if I get told off and told that's wrong, I'm blaming Tucker. Yeah. It's all Tucker's fault. All Tucker's fault. I also avoided saying that because I also don't remember the other person with the 344. Oh, I think it's Rubentis. Maybe. I mean, I can. I'll, I'll check that now. I'm pretty sure it's Rubentis. I'm. I probably verified oh. the run. I just don't remember. He's done. Nope, uh, Calgary Ascensions. Yo, there's my name. <laughs> yeah, Rubentus. Yeah, a couple people getting close. Tucker's sweating in first place. Uh, Battle Factory open level gold. Uh, Tucker with a 225.42. Is that the second one that's been done? Third, I th think. I think Jimmy did it like a few days previously, but it wasn't like a submittable run. He didn't like record it or something, but it's one of the first. 
Where is it? Where is it? There it is. No, it's not. Lovely SRC layout, even with the fix. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got the half fix. I think there might be a further fix that I've just not bothered. I cannot find it. It's like just one down from bug catching contest. It's like the fifth one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it was the third one. I think Jimmy actually got a better one quite recently. Not 100% sure. But yeah, so few people have done this. Yeah, I'll say took a ruining their own pyramid. There is actually a, a factory event coming up um, on in the DS server where a bunch of people do like, there's like an allocated time slot and everyone just sits and does factory attempts and Slayer generally puts money on who's going the furthest. <laughs> Slayer just gambles on it and then loses money and everyone gets happy. It's kind of fun. Sounds fun. What's shiny leaf crown? Dude, I have no clue what these things are. I just know it's a thing in our gold so silver. Jimmy got level 50, but it was not done in a single segment. Yeah, reading Swift the rules of Shine Leaf Crown, and I don't understand. <laughs> Swift's coming in a clutch. Yeah. He is, yeah. That sounds horrendous. Oh no. <laughs> Five shiny leaves, which are a 5% drop, Worcester theorizes. Huh. Ooh, there's a glitched category for this too. Right, that's what I will head. It has a star to your card, right. And is that why it's a four star trainer as opposed, uh, I assume it's like four star trainer card. Yeah, yeah, it's a four star trainer card. You can't get all five stars on one card, sadly. Oh, oh! I just assumed that the shiny leaf one would be the fifth one that he just couldn't. No, no, no! Do I'm it. pretty sure the fifth one is like national decks or something. Oh, right. I'm not 100 percent sure, but it is something that it's either like complete regional decks or whatever. Like you can't, you just can't do it on one card. Anyway, but it's probably regional. It would make more sense to be regional. Just get another DS capture card. Easy. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! No. <laughs> Uh, Old main pokes X good drill for Pokemon Black White category extension. Roll with a 4, 15, 16. Which is actually, it turns out, like 18 minutes behind the actual world, world record. It's yeah, cool. sad. X because Diabolical and Black and White 1. Because you get it so much earlier. Its moves are like Fury Swipes. It doesn't even have Metal Claw yet. Co-op Pikachu, Tibble and Ghost Skit with a 42507. Etiquette, what's the like what's the equivalent for Eevee? You happen to know? I mean I think it would be like basically the same. I don't know what the actual record is. Um co-op is kind of a odd category, because like we have true co-op, which is use the uh, have the second player out the whole time. And use them as much as you can. Right. Um, Co-op is basically you could do the normal any percent run as long as the second person is always controlling the second controller. So like they don't have to be there the whole time. Only when you have it summoned. Um, so right. in theory, you could get a 302 in co-op if you were like that in tune with your partner. It's just. Yeah, that, that'd be actually really difficult <laughs> yeah and i was like better i was thinking true co-op which is the main reason i asked you because i thought you had that <laughs> the highlight well yeah. you do have true co-op eevee don't you yeah true co-op in eevee is a 326 and in pika it's a 319 all right okay it, there's no real reason for the difference it's just uh just better run is. yeah i still love the get kicked by koga category by the way that's still, still really funny to me don't like didn't they get brought up to get rid of it <laughs> yeah there's, there's no point reason. to get rid of a category, yeah there's, there's, think, but... there's probably no point but it's funny yeah it's, Kicked it's by funny. Koga is yeah I, I wish good description wish more fun. Yeah. 
got turned into a kid by Curry Run because he got ratioed by a stub in Dojo. That's fair. Yeah. Um, all mains without alternatives, Lunala from uh, Ice Fixin. 53627. That Sounds is. Horrible. Oh, I routed it, but I forgot to take into account that you'd get hit. <laughs> Because like the majority of like the fights, you just don't get hit. Because, like, you. So how it works is all this how like the ring went was you go into like Dynamax Adventures, get all the. Like get a load of um, Dynite or so you can afford experience candies. And use them to like bump up the level five Cosmog that you get. To um, the level like 52, so it evolves into Cosmo M and then you level up again to evolve into Lunala. But being level 53 before you've um, before you've done Hop 3, basically just like any percent with DLC but lower level. But it, it yeah, basically, I rather that, but uh, I forgot that you do get hit towards the end. So I didn't put in any healing items or any special defense for the final fight. That so made it like so much worse. But great. Uh, that's my fault. <laughs> and then turns out Morgrim has done a fair few trade on mains. And looks at the things. Oh, and I also I want to bring this up. Hoagie Hot Yan. Just took all the flex on world records. Oh my god. <laughs> including flex on mum. Phenomenal. Like, including flex on mum, which was. So this flex is. On Cosmog. <laughs> yeah. That one was not me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, like, I just, it's impressive the fact that Hot Yan beat flex on mum because that was. Held by Retro Tato on the old patch. And it beat it by two seconds on the new patch. I believe. So, yeah. This in itself is a flex. This is like flex on Sword Shield leaderboards. Yeah, no, it literally is. Like, flex on PSR. Yeah. Also, low key annoying because I had a few of those. <laughs> and I, can't, I don't want to do it again. The bitterness seeping through now. <laughs> yeah, that is the bitterness coming through. Like some mum socially distanced does not exist. I do not know what you're talking about. <laughs> that, that was never a leaderboard. No one can prove me otherwise. <laughs> yeah, I got removed. Uh, Someone bring up the audit logs. Yeah, it's just I accidentally verified so, uh, and it like someone's room. That shouldn't have been allowed because they just spanned in a completely different room. Nox would say otherwise, but I digress. But yeah, <laughs> so to cover for my own mistake, I put it as flex socially distanced. Um, but Tower Two Fish Japanese uh, get a few world record by you know we know one twenty eight oh six. Just cool that there's now Japanese boards because now there's um, uh, Itotaka and uh, Yoshida Shu, I think, uh, for the category extensions. And then I end with a 115 for Don't Get Oshifu. Yeah, I kind of, when I was, I did the marathon and I decided to just do both. Don't get her shifu and get her shifu times. Try to improve them a little bit, and I ended up having a lot more fun. So I played it a little bit more after the marathon as well. I had really bad speed on that. Don't get her shifu, but that's a thought. You're fourth with a one fifteen. World records are one fourteen twenty five. They're all quite that's, close. It's much closer on the don't get her shifu side, but there's a lot less RNG in that category. Yeah, there's also like two minutes of time save. I know on the world record, or something like that. <laughs> so. It can definitely be improved. I know that's yeah. I know. It. I know that. I know the 
your time and that is more beatable than your getter shoe time for sure. Yeah, also because yeah, getter shoe. I don't, I don't know if I, yeah, I don't think I said this one, but yeah, you also got one twenty eight thirty nine. Well, yeah, that was with an Onyx death too. So. Yeah, really solid. Oh yeah, cause, oh yeah, <laughs> I didn't realize how close that was to my own time. <laughs> cool. Uh, and then crash. Yeah, percent. it's a fun cat. It's a fun category, but not to oh. grind for long periods yeah. of time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then yeah, yeah again though. Once again, crash percent for English. Oh yeah. <laughs> I got one of those, I was just like, I'll just submit it, whatever. I don't know who's counted the milliseconds, but that'll be helpful later on, I feel like. Or they'll just never change in. It doesn't matter, but still. Fair play to whoever's done that. Uh, also, Crash Percent uh, Japanese, same as English. <laughs> I'm wondering, a lot of those crash percent times are on older patches. I wonder if it's possible to crash like that in the 1.1.3. I know you could on 1.1.2. I don't know if you still can. They must have had yeah, to get rid of that one, surely. Reverse badge yeah, order. There, there is a 1.1.2 oh, crash t uh, percent time. But nothing from 0.3. Oh. Yeah, just to point out the like reverse badge order from Aspect and you know enough, but like a one fourteen fifty four from Aspect, and then Etiquette with Elite Four round two. Yeah, this was a. Uh... I don't know. I thought it was gonna be more interesting than it was. It's basically any percent with like some more fights, um. But I might look at it again. It's uh to unlock round two, you just have to complete. You have to see the entire Sinnoh decks. Um, so it adds up to like maybe 20 more fights and then like a detour to Celestic to see either Dialga or Palkia, whichever one you didn't catch. Um, and then the actual round two fights are a whole lot of please don't crit me while I finish my setup. And then sweep. Wait, do you not have to do the Stark Mountain side quest? That you is not. for round three. That's for oh, round that's three. That's so lame. <laughs> that is sad. Class superior. <laughs> well, just Which, a, just to be round fair, three, round then. three, round three, if we decide to do as a speed run, will be stupidly ridiculous because of uh, Cynthia has a level eighty-eight gar jump. So <laughs> I didn't even know that. I, I did. I I didn't. I forgot the reason. Sorry for the three. spoiler, but <laughs> dude, I haven't yeah, played the game. Since, I haven't played it since November. You weren't spoiling much. <laughs> her gar jump is pretty busted, just in general. So that was terrifying. Yeah. It's, uh, the entire round three is all level 75 plus, and Cynthia's whole team is 84, 85, 86, and 88. And they're all EV, they're like max EVs and good natures and good movesets and items. It's disgusting. I also reminded because it's not on here, but like Pulse did that, uh, which battle tower run right yes and actually and i actually finished it right <laughs> um i don't know if he finished the whole thing i know he got through either doubles or soul singles i don't remember either one of them yeah from why which i assume i don't i don't know if he's planning to add that as a board oh he's planning to get added as a board but still that's just fair play in doing that as well like Pulse did like tried uh, like went out that for a good while. Oop, there's a there's a fan game. <laughs> Pokemon Gold Silver SNES. Uh any percent of Chikorita, Turtle Speed with a 242, and then any percent both with a 246. For the rest of them, Jelly with a rumble, and RDA as well with a couple there. You mean a you mean a rumble record that's not held by RDA? <laughs> Actually, joking about this, I think the, the person 
I don't think RDA actually has the most Rumble World Records. <laughs> Seriously? I believe it's Akiri. Oh my god. I think Akiri... Oh, let's have a nosy. Uh, Pokemon... We did this one. Then Category Ascension. I, I should say Category Ascension on World Records. I believe it's Akiri. Yeah. 46. 46 World Records. Dang. I think they're all Rumble. <laughs> or maybe... Oh yeah, no, it'll be all Rumble because it's just category extensions. There won't be Rumble Weekend category extensions. Yeah, cool. Uh, just got that. Uh, that is everything though. That is it. <laughs> that is the end of the leaderboard roundup. Um, I think next podcast will be on the 5th. The February. Uh, I, I assume, at least as of right now, both Iron and Edgecute, you'll be there. Should yes. be. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, and I was just going to mention that as well. Um, well, actually, first things first, podcast hosts. Shout out to that not working. Oh, well. <laughs> Follow Educate and Iron. <laughs> nice command. Yeah. Uh, this is probably something. It. Oh no, I remember what I put an S on the end. I don't. I didn't put, like. There we go. Go as a guest. Yeah. I'm technically, a guest. technically, technically, score is now a guest. I... Even though you've been on like three times now since. He gets so many good times. <laughs> I so I've funny. been I've been a guest like since like episode four or something and i think since then i've appeared on like two or three of them anyway yeah <laughs> you're, you're the ds expert yeah um but also uh there's more like for this channel there is bttv and F more bttv and ffz emotes now uh because they've been added and then I mean, I guess may as well just bring it up now. Hopefully, there'll be a lot more additional things with uh, PSR TV happening, just in general. Uh, things are being switched over so that it's, well, that I have access to a lot more things now. His par is overwhelming. It's, it's overwhelming. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I am now being dealt with more having to go through dumb paperwork type things. It's what this. <laughs> that's that's the only thing that's changed. I've had to do more things. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing fun as of yet, but hopefully there will be more some, some more fun things happening soon. Uh, Barrier Blitz is next week. Please watch. Um, is there anything else? The S Factory event. Oh, I, I don't know when it's happening, but it is in planning stages. So join the DS Discord and check out the races channel. People are discussing joining and discussing um, when the best time slot is to do it. Um, level fifty open, or in a, it's level fifty category, and just we're just gonna keep going and see who gets the best streak. Um, another thing worth mentioning is. The new Pokemon game, Pokemon Legends Arceus, comes out at the end of this month. Um, okay. We don't, we don't have a channel for it yet, but uh, discussion will be in the Switch Discord at least to start. Depending on what kind of game it is, maybe it gets broken out into a new like subgroup of PSR, but it'll at least start out in Switch Discord. So if you're interested in running the new games, definitely check that out. I'm just looking forward to playing that. I have no idea what the run will be like. I don't think I, anyone I, does. But I have no idea if I want to speed run it, but it looks like fun. <laughs> yeah, I saw a piece. video today that made it look really, really and like I've seen some of the stuff from it and it looks really, really cool. Hopefully the graphics are okay. <laughs> That's like my only concern. That is like my least concern. <laughs> I mean as long as long as I'm not like clipping through things. 
as long and as I don't any sword shield trees, man, I'm okay. <laughs> Fair. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, have a good rest of your day, week, evening, time zone, wherever you are. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye.